hey guys it's Stephanie and today I'm gonna do a mid-month wrap-up for the month of May it's halfway through the month and I've already read six books and I don't want to wait and let these pile up into a gigantic wrap-up where I can't spend as much time talking about each book as I would like to so I decided to split it up into two parts so the first book I read in May is one that I picked for my book club and that was and again by Jessica Chiarelli um, I am going to be doing actually a separate review just for this book. So I'm not going to be talking about it here, but keep your eyes peeled for that because it's definitely coming out soon. The second book I read was Everything I Don't Remember by Jonas Hassan Kamiri, and it was translated from Swedish uh, by Rachel Wilson Broyles. This book is about a young man who dies in a tragic car crash. His name is Samuel. And there is an author going around interviewing those closest to him to try to piece together um, what happened on his last day. I thought the structure of it was very unique. Essentially, it's all these characters being interviewed, so the book reads like they are talking to this author. When the characters are talking, you know, they'll interrupt themselves and say things like, does that answer your question? Or, or what do you mean? What was the nature of our relationship? as the characters are telling all of their stories about Samuel. At first, it did get a little confusing because um, it would constantly switch between characters and timelines. Um, but after a while, I found the transition to be almost seamless because each character had their distinct voice. It only took a few pages into the book, but I had a good grip on who was talking and who was giving their side of the story. The only thing was the ending was a little anticlimactic. I don't think that was that big of a deal in comparison to like the kind of story that it was. Like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I liked getting each character's view on the same person, just how different each person's relationship was with him and how we don't think about how different our relationship is with everybody and if someone were to go around and interview, you know, our even close group of friends or family, the type of relationship and what they would know or say about us, I feel like, would be a lot more different than we realize. Especially, like, given the fact that in this book, you know, they're all talking about the same person, but just what he could offer to each person and with their personal experiences. It was just a very interesting book. I would highly recommend it. The third book I read was The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I really enjoyed Never Let Me Go, so I decided to pick this up. I went into this book knowing it wasn't going to be a lot like Never Let Me Go, and that it was going to be a lot slower, so I was definitely expecting that when I came in. Um, I found it to be fairly similar to Never Let Me Go, especially in the narrative style where the protagonist is kind of telling this nostalgic retrospective story. This book is about uh, Mr. Stevens who was a longtime butler at Darlington Hall and he takes a road trip to connect with someone who he used to be close to and he used to work with at Darlington Hall and during this road trip he is talking to the reader and reflecting on the memories of the once great Darlington Hall like I said, this I went into this knowing this was going to be a slower book. It did take me a while to get through. This was one I set aside for a little bit and read other things and then came back to and finished because it was fairly short. Um, like I said, I do enjoy, I realize um, I had recommended Never Let Me Go to a friend and she did not enjoy that nostalgic um, stream of consciousness kind of writing where the character, where the narrator goes off on rabbit trails and gets distracted she didn't enjoy that so like i said i really enjoyed the writing as he is looking back and talking about especially this person he is going to visit um you definitely see a recurring theme of missed opportunities and him looking back and noticing what were the pivotal moments and decisions that really shaped the way his life took and what his priorities were and what he valued at the time that dramatically changed the direction his life took to what could have been i also thought this writing was a perfect example of show don't tell writing since mr stevens is a little bit of an unreliable narrator you do have to piece together just from the events that he tells you and the clues how he feels about something because he he is very professional and he does tend to keep his emotions to himself he's a very collected man 
all in all, I thought it was a very enjoyable book. Definitely recommend it. The next book I read was The Girl From Home by Adam Mitzner. This was a book that was sent to me by the publisher. Um, it is about a protagonist who became very wealthy on Wall Street and goes to his high school reunion where he catches up with some of his high school friends, including the prom queen who he never had a chance with in high school because he was not who he is today. And they reconnect and have a little bit of an affair. And as he is starting this relationship with her, she confides in him that her husband is abusive and beats her and she wants to leave him. But, um, you know, he is threatening to kill her if that is the case. Um, you do find out just the way that the novel is structured with like the back and forth in time. You do know that um, Jonathan gets charged with the murder of her husband which I, I wasn't a fan of how he did the back and forth in time structure. I feel like that works with some books. I don't feel like it worked with this. I feel like it took the surprise out of a lot of things that could have been more surprising or more powerful if it was just written in a linear fashion. There were some things I liked about it. Unfortunately, I thought the characters were very stereotypical and two-dimensional. The author, I think from what I read, was a lawyer and the part of the book that I enjoyed the most was when they were receiving legal counsel and they were trying to figure out what the other person was going to do and try to get their moves in order and trying to manipulate the case to work a certain way. Just that legal manipulation and trying to figure things out was probably the most interesting part of the novel. Um, so that was definitely my favorite part of the book. I definitely feel like those are where his strengths are. So overall, I gave this book like three stars. And the last book that I read this month is going to be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. Um, but I read Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. This was the first Neil Gaiman book that I have read and unfortunately I did not like it. I don't know if urban fantasy just is not my thing. I just thought it was a little cheesy. I was not a fan of the characters. The villains were very cartoony. The whole thing felt just like an 80s cheesy movie, unfortunately for me. I know a lot of people like it. It has very high ratings on Goodreads, so I am definitely guessing this is a personal preference thing. Maybe it's just not my genre. I am not giving up on Neil Gaiman, though. He does write a lot of different books and different genres that I am definitely going to give him another try, but unfortunately this one was just not a winner. Anyway guys, that is what I've read so far in May. What are you guys reading right now? I'd love to know. Tell me in the comments. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.